okay so let's see some fastest flying birds so one on the left is the one that has a record for the fastest flight so i found this very interesting video this talks about the spine tailed swift okay so i have just put the video with no editing now only you can see it there you go can you see it were you able to see let's see it once again now okay look carefully and try to spot the bird only at 25% or 10% speed you can actually see that something is moving so that is the speed of this bird 10% with zoom okay so that's the speed now let's look at dive pilots could choose their reincarnations they'd come back as falcons peregrines seem to love pulling g's as much as any pilot they experience maximum g's in one of the greatest demonstrations of flight control in any bird their signature attack the stoop it's in the hunt that peregrine falcons show off an adjustability of flight surfaces far beyond that of any aircraft to spot prey peregrines often fly high up to 3000 feet where prey have a hard time seeing them when a peregrine locks onto a target it rolls pulls its wings in and plunges coming out of a stoop the peregrine feels the highest forces known for large animals up to 25 g's okay So as I mentioned, they encounter 25 g force. Let's see. Let's see how do birds glide. Now we have done a complete lecture on gravity, on 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 gliding. Okay, so we don't have to really spend too much time. It's the same thing like you have studied on the gliders. They also have to maintain a particular glide angle. They also have to maintain l by d maximum. Okay. So as the l by d increases, the glide angle reduces and hence force the glide range also increases so when you increase in size you have a higher reynolds number higher reynolds number normally gives you higher l by d so very large bird let's say let's say albatross which is 3 meters wing span l by d can be around 19 this is comparable to boeing 747 the so 747 has a l by d max of around 17 and a half to 18 okay and the bird has l by d of 19 but if we take a very small bird called as a fruit fly which is only 6 mm wing span it's actually an insect not a bird but if you look at it carefully it's a bird so 6 mm wing span l by d is only 1.8 but still more than 1 nearing to 2 okay and can you believe that even snakes are able to glide So this is a very interesting very interesting video about gliding snakes. Now, those of you who are scared of snakes you can There close your eyes. There are five species of snakes in the Malaysian jungles that are able to transform their skeletons to glide through the air. A study so has see, revealed this is a gliding exactly snake how these gliding snakes contort their bodies to cover a great deal of ground. When it leaps off a high tree branch it rotates its ribs forwards and upwards making its body 
double in width. This transforms it into a much flatter, aerodynamic shape, similar to an airplane wing. It moves its head back and forth, which passes waves down its body like it's swimming in air. Professor Jake Sosha carried out the study by creating a plastic copy of the snake's cross-section and placed it in a tank of flowing water and gathered data on the way the water moves around it using lasers and high-speed cameras. Okay, so this is a, a faculty member from Virginia Tech who has taken up a project. These snakes can go up to 50 meters in a glide. So they go up a tree, they launch themselves, they flatten their body so that they give an aerodynamic shape and then they launch their head and keep moving it so that the body goes in waves. Okay, let us see it once again. Let us see this once again. There are five species of snakes in the Malaysian jungles that are able to transform their skeletons to glide through the air. A study has revealed exactly how these gliding snakes contort their bodies to cover a great deal of ground. When it leaps off a high tree branch, it rotates its ribs forwards and upwards, making its body double in width. This transforms it into a much flatter, aerodynamic shape, similar to an airplane wing. It moves its head back and forth, which passes waves down its body like it's swimming in air. Professor Jake Sosha carried out the study by creating a plastic copy of the snake's cross-section and placed it in a tank of flowing water and gathered data on the way the water moves around it using lasers and high-speed cameras. So there is also a very interesting video when there are five students who work with this professor. So the snakes are launched and then they run after the snake to catch it and bring it back. Now, I would not work on such a project, okay, right. Now, the thing is, how do you actually improve your shape? You do it by changing your wing or by wing morphing, okay. So we can see there that if you take a very, very shallow glide and ignore theta, then the velocity at which you launch yourself is just proportional to the square root of 2w by rho SCL, okay. So, if you assume some CL value and assume some rho value, you can see that depending on the wing loading values, you would have a glide velocity, okay. So, it is very interesting with a very simple formula, we can estimate the quoted or calculated glide velocity and you can see that the percentage error is well within 2 percent plus minus through a simple formula. So, you just get the wing loading and you can estimate the velocity in glide, okay. So, in birds, as their glide velocity reduces or I should say like this, as they increase the wing area, the glide velocity reduces and hence the time in the air also increases, okay. Also, the distance traveled by them will also be a function. So, larger birds which have larger wing area, they glide slowly. At the same time, if they want to change their glide velocity, just like we saw in the video about the swan, about this uh, vulture, if you want to change, if you want to change the glide velocity, you can change the area. So, the same bird when traveling at 31 kilometers per hour has the wings coming out and it goes for very, very closely placed wings. This is just like the variable sweep that we see in the aircraft. So, we can always say that the variable sweep concept of the aircraft is inspired by the birds, okay. So, there are two examples there about the falcon and the pigeon who undergo a shape change. So, this shape change is called as morphing. So, heavier birds glide at higher speed. If you look at rotary wing aircraft or helicopters versus natural flyers, you see a lot of similarities. First of all, in a helicopter what do you do is you create a relative flow around the rotors by rotating continuously and here also they are flapping it along the arc. If you actually take the locus of the tips of the bird wing, you will be surprised it goes in a circular path or elliptical path. 
I will show you some videos of that also. Similarly, when you want to tilt, when you want to go forward, you tilt the thrust rotational plane. Same thing is done by the birds and by the insects also. They tilt the flapping stroke plane and that is how they get the forward motion. And during forward flight, you change the angle of the rotors. Similarly, you change the angle of flapping. So, I would say that the helicopters are actually doing many things just like what the birds are doing. So, here is a here is an example of some birds and insects. Now, these figures are not in the same scale. For example, we have a bird here, okay, and we have a fly here. They are not the same size. Only in movies you can have same size. But if you see the pattern in which the wings are being flapped generally becomes more complex when you have go into a smaller animal. Larger, larger insects or larger uh, flying objects, they have a very simpler flapping motion. Look at albatross for example, one of the largest birds, it just has a simple helical fashion. But look at the bow fly, look at the locust for example, it goes forward and backwards. So, smaller flyers normally clap in a larger. So, we will have a look at some animation. So, this is the flapping motion of the bird called Canada goose. So, the locus of the uh, inboard tip and the outboard tip shows you the flapping plane. On the other hand, if I look at a moth, you can see now it is more complicated. So, now not only is there are two distinct top and bottom, there are two distincts. The bottom is actually figure of it, the top is not figure of it. And also notice that the body also keeps flipping along with the one that is meant for center of gravity control. If they do not do that, then they will also start moving and they will not be able to hover at a particular place. If we look at dragonfly, now there are two sets of wings. Dragonfly has two wings and as you can see here, they are not moving in the same manner. There is a lag between them. So, you can say that these are two independent set of wings which are flapping in a conical, in a, in a frustum of a cone manner, but that is inclined and one behind the other with a lag in between. Okay. Let us look at the hummingbird. Now, hummingbird is one of the most amazing birds. The amount of control it demonstrates in keeping its position, flying backwards, flying upwards, flying sideways. So, looking at the flapping pattern, you can realize more, more you are near the first of a cone, more you are able to maintain hover. Hovering condition depends on the motion. So, for the hummingbird, I have actually many, many more amazing images. So, let us look at flapping in slow motion. We have already seen a video which was an animation. Okay. So, look at it in ultra slow motion. It will give you an idea about how the wings flap. So, the pigeon is now perched at a particular location. So, now starts taking the wings out. So, the first requirement is to leave the ground. So, you can see the downs and also the tail is morphing out. But the tail has also given an angle because they want to turn. So, they would like the air to give you a turning flight. Now, it wants to go forward. After it has bounced and turned, it wants to go forward. So, when it is going forward, notice the tail also deflects, there is an angle change in the tail, there is an area change in the tail, there is a camber change in the tail and that is happening naturally with the wings. 
now it's going to turn okay so there you go one more look so wants to launch so therefore it bends down and the wings are going up basically to flap down so you throw yourself up and now you flap the air down so basically down and forward so it's down and forward i can't do i'm not so efficient like a pigeon look at the landing gear being retracted inside everything that you see in aircraft has actually been inspired by birds it's amazing how much aerodynamics you can look by just looking at these animals this is a fruit bat which is in again captured in slow motion now look at this particular pattern carefully because i will very soon show you a study about the aerodynamics of this particular animal done by one of your students one of your seniors okay so notice now how the outboard tips so it's like a human hand only it's like a human hand if you see but the uh, motion is very complex ha huh. now let's look at hovering flight so you see how she is able to maintain position at just one place and the tail is also twisting slightly the, the rear is also going out and now a slight change in the inclination and you can go turning this is in slow motion i have some very beautiful pictures of these birds in full speed i'll show them also to you towards the end when i have some time so the material for this presentation has been taken from these two very interesting textbooks which are available freely online okay the one is called as the simple science of flight from insect to jumbo jets by tenekes okay uh, this is available with me also if you are interested and there is also a very nice aiwa textbook by shi et al on introduction to the flapping wing aerodynamics this one is more formal it contains a lot of mathematical expressions derivations for the flight okay